And a lot of what we do here at Origin is thinking outside the box. Well, that's thinking big time outside the box. Just, just, just get outside the box. You know, that's the first step. If you can just get outside the box, you're doing pretty good. Okay. People always want to just poke their head outside the box and they want to keep their body and their feet inside. Some people are willing to stand up. Some people are willing to step one foot outside. Man, I want to burn the box down. We discussed like, well, origin, collaborating with said brand uh, could be really cool for origin to get into new markets. And he's like, well, we're looking for 300 to 500,000 pieces a year. And I was like, no problem. <laughs> to make our rash guards. When we thought it was the actual motor box in here for the heating coil, but then Maggie looked down and saw that that was pretty much exploded inside of there, so. It smelled like something was melting or on fire. Yeah. And Desi came over, she's like, my, my machine isn't warm enough. You know, it's at 130. I just looked at it a couple minutes before, it was at 160. It couldn't be dropping. What happens is, over time, vibration and heat can cause wires to loosen up under the lugs and can cause this to melt. So this goes to show that the fuse itself kind of actually failed. It didn't do its job. <laughs> Henry bypassed it for now and we're taking turns double checking and keeping our eye on it for a little while. Yeah, that tells you how much you can have multiple safety systems in check or in place, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to save it. You know? right. nope. Luckily we caught it in time and now we're just searching out a part to replace it and get back up and running. I mean, right now we have 250 that we had to print, but if we got set back a week, it could go up to like a thousand rash guards. So, I mean, setting us back like even a week puts us back quite a bit. Yeah, preventative maintenance right now we don't have a program for. It's kind of like everybody chips in. And what we need to do is we need to establish a plan. So I've decentralized a little bit and to let the team kind of handle that. Well, preventative maintenance, we'll be starting to do this quarterly. And pretty much you go through the machines and tighten lugs, check fuses, grease everything that needs to be greased. And um, John's been doing most of this work for a while. I got a phone call, we were in Columbus uh, two weekends ago and it's from this hunting company that's been around since 1904 and they want to collaborate with us on making compression gear we discussed like well origin collaborating with said brand uh could be really cool for origin to get into new markets and he's like well we're looking for 300 to 500,000 pieces a year and i was like no problem <laughs> so Basically, now we got to figure out a way to scale it up. How do you go from making 100 pieces a day, right, to 1,000 pieces a day or 1,200 pieces a day? We pay real American wages, so we're not China. We're not just setting a bunch of people up in a row and having them work all hours of the day. We got to be more efficient. We got to be smarter with our resources. We've got to tighten down our processes so that we can produce a thousand or fifteen hundred units out of the same exact square footage as it takes us to, to produce a hundred units. That's the challenge. That's the challenge I put on the team also. I gotta make a pair of brackets out of that to hold the uh, rash guide material, space it away from the machine so they, they can eliminate an overkill of the machine they have in there. That big rewinder. When we were doing that History Channel show, mm -hmm. 
that guy come out and did a whole interview on me out here. When he first got here, he goes, now I don't want you to edit anything in your brain. I just want you to roll like you roll. I said, then hang on. <laughs> they ended up telling me, at, you know, like three quarters of the way through the week, they said, we got our own file just for you. <laughs> so the old rack, really it was a cradle that was supposed to help feed the fabric in automatically, but then it just, it just pooped to the bed. And so we had something like a makeshift one that just didn't want to keep the roll fed. And so with this, hopefully it will help keep the machine uh, more evenly fed. We don't have as much shifting going on with the fabric. I hope that it'll make production a lot faster because every time the fabric shifted on the old one, I'd have to reload the machine. With this being so close to the machine, hopefully I'll, it'll reduce the risk of the fabric shifting and the design being cut the wrong way. Yes, I do. Especially if we get the crew that we need with what we've got now, we can, we can definitely see that goal. Because if this machine can do 500 rash guards cut in a day, then that's what, 2,500 rash guards a week? So yeah, that'll work. Yeah, I definitely think we could get there. He's good at finding ways to make things work and not taking no for an answer, so enough people and determination. As you can see, this process here, it's still a little bit detached, but we had to solve the problems within the individual cells. And then what we're going to do is we'll kind of merge those cells together to create more efficiencies and to decrease waste, which we call MUDA. The way it works is the dye gets printed on paper, then the paper has to sublimate into the fabric. And we had a problem with the printer we solved, we had a problem with the, the roll roll heat press, and after it comes off this heat press, all the artwork, it goes over here to the laser cutter, and we had a problem with the laser cutter also because it wasn't feeding uh, symmetrically into the machine so that the laser could scan, read, and cut. So we had to solve a lot of problems this week. We figured out that in order to scale up from 100 pieces to 1,000 pieces a day, we'd need to get three more of these babies. So that's about 75 grand. This would need to run on three shifts. That would need to run on sheet three shifts, the laser cutter. And also, we'd need to expand this cell out, double, we need to double it. So these shelves would come out and we'd go right to the edge of the embroidery machine. So we'd add, uh, you know, six more people in here. Same amount of space, adding maybe 100 square feet. Working smarter, not working harder, thinking outside the box. We'll be able to manage it, so I think we're in good shape. Success, success. <laughs>